Tencent and the Gimor family are considering the buyout of Ubisoft? Dragon Quest creator speaks out against woke ideology and pays the price. Hollywood gives up on woke ideology. And Suicide Squad killed the Justice League's latest update launches to only 200 players. Welcome back to Fan TV, where we love to dissect the latest video game disasters in this woke video game industry, while it's enjoying some slice of life moments from nerd culture. If you happen to enjoy what we do here, level up your support by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. It may or may not unlock a bonus piece of free DLC content that I guarantee you do not want to miss at the end of this video. It's looking like Ubisoft might actually get acquired. Tencent are said to weigh buyout of Ubisoft. Gonna buy them for 10 cents? Yeah, exactly. It's sourced here on Bloomberg here. Now, I don't want to say I told you so. This is exactly what I said was going to happen. I think if Ubisoft gets acquired, they will probably do a dramatic restructuring. They'll probably get rid of the majority of the staff. And in fact, one of the most trustworthy leakers already hinted at a 30 to 40% workforce reduction. <laughs> What a happy, happy day it is to suddenly see a company that was once comfortable with gamers not owning their games suddenly now have to be comfortable with unemployment and bankruptcy. What a wonderful day! What a wonderful day! This is such a historic moment. A moment that shows that no matter how big you think you are, you can still be brought low by the people who made you. Let this be a message to every single company, big or small, that prioritizing DEI leads to compromised quality. Compromised quality leads to bad products. Bad products lead to unhappy customers, and unhappy customers lead to bankruptcy. Damn it, that statement sounds so good. I can't believe I came up with it. But guys, it gets even better. I want you to see the lack of self-awareness that the monetization director at Ubisoft displays as his whole Oak ideology ship is dragged asunder by bankruptcy into the crushing depths of unemployment. I rarely post on social media, but today I am sad, ashamed, and sad. The gaming industry is rough at the moment, we all know it. But seeing how gamers react on social medias, wishing ill fate to companies and people alike is sad. And not only towards Ubisoft. Even though it is always the vocal minority that express themselves on social media, I was hurt, hurt, and ashamed to be a part of this community. Oh, boo-hoo! Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. What is even more revolting is coming on LinkedIn and seeing the same comments from people within the industry. On top of exposing yourself as a clearly non-decent human being, you are affecting thousands of employees that are already impacted by all the hate, despite doing their best to deliver incredible experiences. How can you wish a company to fail simply because they do not cater to you? Or that the product does not please you is beyond me. We are all on the same boat. Please, please, please stop spreading hate. We should all uplift each other instead of bringing each other down. <laughs> This moron is so brain dead that he actually thinks that 99% of the game population are considered as the vocal minority. That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. This guy actually thinks that it's only 5% of the gaming population that hates the fact that we're getting poor products from Ubisoft, that we're getting ideologies and messaging in our products. The rest of the 95% of the gaming population loves Ubisoft for everything that they do and everything that they stand for. Crack is cheap. He's basically saying that even if a company produces crappy products or products that do not meet the customer's expectations, we still deserve your money. God damn, there's a lot of stupid bastards walking around. You trying to get us killed? Yeah! To this day! To this day! There are tons of creators out there who are too afraid to speak out on the state of the industry because they don't want to be blacklisted. And recently, the Dragon Quest creator came out and spoke about how unhappy he was with some of the decisions they made with Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake, like removing gender. <laughs> <laughs> These sensitive snowflakes on social media are now attacking him, calling him very vile things.
There are those who are saying Yuji going Nazi was not on my bingo sheet, all because he said, why can't we just have male and females in video games? Oh, come on! You know, when I heard about this for the first time, how the legendary Dragon Quest creator came under a heavy deluge of hate and toxicity. For merely speaking the truth, it reminded me of a Bible verse, John 3.20, that says, Everyone who does evil hates the light, and does not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. There is honestly nothing problematic regarding what the Dragon Quest creator said. What sense does it make to change male and female to body type 1 and body type 2? And when you question this, you are immediately called an NAZI and labeled every single phobe and ist in the book. And if you're wondering what is the reason for this extreme over the top hateful toxicity, because woke ideology is satanic and demonic. The only reason as to why they react this way is because you're exposing them. Darkness or evil hates the light and wants nothing to do with it. That's not ridiculous. That's not ridiculous to say that. You and that armor. Damn. Turn your male gaze elsewhere. Peacemaker. I hope the world can see now what's really going on out here because it's getting ridiculous. Netherrealm Studios, you guys are skating on some mighty thin ice. Don't shoot me, you idiot. You didn't cool, sweetheart. How that nigga moving so fast? Right. What the hell? Bro, what the f? What the f? What the f? Oh, what the f? <laughs> <laughs> Quick feed beats accuracy any day of the week. Oh, right. Oh, boy. Here we go. Studios are assembling super fan focus groups to assess various materials for franchise projects to avoid social media backlash. They will just tell us if you do that, fans are going to retaliate. If it's early enough and the movie isn't finished yet, we can make those kinds of changes. Yes. And so this is an article written, uh, toxic fandoms have grown so powerful that while talent, executives, and publicists privately bemoan the issue, fear of triggering another backlash keeps several studios from speaking for this story. We started experiencing a rampage of what I would say hyper-conservative bigotry. In other words, the Acolyte was the latest high-profile target of toxic fandom. Uh, it comes to the territory, but it's gotten incredibly loud in the last couple of years, said a veteran marketing ex So guys, let me bring it down to you. If you're the type of fan that expects creativity and quality products, you're a toxic fan. If you're the type of fan that believes in constructive criticism, you're a toxic fan. If you're the type of fan that expects companies to meet and exceed your expectations, you are a toxic fan. If you're the type of fan that cares about protecting the lore and canon of certain products, you are a toxic fan. And you know what, guys? If that's what it means to be toxic in nowadays, then I'll come out and say it. I'll come out of the closet and just say it. I am a toxic fan. But do you know what I love? Hollywood is finally starting to see the light. The fact that now they're going, wow, people don't actually like it when you desecrate their favorite franchises. People don't actually like it when you prioritize messaging and woke ideology in their favorite franchises. This is a huge victory for us. Woke ideology is dying. Respect the source material. That's gonna be the new trend. And to all the gaslighters out there, all the ones who insisted that the Emperor is wearing new clothes. There is no war in Bossing Say. I say suck it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Things just keep getting worse for Suicide Squad. Season 3 of the game is officially here and Rocksteady is continuing to add new content to try to keep players coming back. The problem is that no one really cares. On its launch day, Suicide Squad peaked to less than 300 players on Steam. <laughs> Sensational. Even that's compared to 572 when season two launched. And neither of those numbers are good. Now those stats don't necessarily paint the full picture. There are definitely people playing on PlayStation and Xbox that are still coming back to the game. So it's more than 282 players. But what are we looking at? A couple thousand at best, probably? So far, Rocksteady has only committed to year one of the roadmap, and that includes four seasons of content in total. So if you're a diehard Suicide Squad fan, you've got one more season of the game before it's probably getting put on life support and Rocksteady totally moves on. Suicide Kill the Justice League is the gift that keeps on giving. But if we're being honest, I think the reason as to why they keep pumping out content is because they are legally obligated to do so. Because they made a promise that this is what we're going to be delivering, and if they don't deliver that promise, it's quite possible that they might be sued. But even more interestingly enough, I want you guys to take a look at the recent character that they dropped for this new season. I'm Lawless, 
breakers already know what I'm about. But luckily for newbies, this is a good jumping on point. I did the whole Robin Hood thing in Gotham a while. That iceberg lounge party heist. <laughs> Me and mine. Now Metropolis is under siege and it's being suppressed in media. I had to get in there and do something. Okay, I had some help from the Suicide Squad. Thanks, Dad. Shot. <laughs> Uh, she's an ethical thief and a communist because that's what people want in a superhero game. So guys, there were also communist ideologies that went into making this game. Now it all makes sense as to why Batman was so disrespectfully discharged the way that he was. And the fact that they keep releasing these obscure characters that no one even knows about. Hell, maybe they'll even let us play as Batman's black aunt in the next season. Who knows? No, please, please don't say that. We do have one more thing. What are you talking about? Equip your pistol. How do I equip it? Why? Brendan, the controls didn't change for you. You always play on controller. Okay, but the, uh, it feels different. I, wait, why does she look not like her here? What, is, what, what, what the fuck? I don't know, what? Weird. Yeah, she does look a lot different all of a sudden. She's she not like, Sheva. She looks like Tomb Raider. That's weird. Did you put a fucking mod in this? No. <laughs> you jack. <laughs> I don't what? think the timing of that could have been any better. Oh, what? <laughs> oh my god.